Hi, I'm Dee Hicks. This is Hilt Academy. Thanks for joining us again. You got a lot to do, don't you? A lot of stuff on your plate. Thanks for taking a few minutes and pausing and thinking with me about getting things done. I want to share with you one of the most simple and powerful ideas that I've ever learned. And I learned it from some brainiac years ago, I'm sure. It is a really amazing way to actually think and work when you and I have a lot to do and we kind of feel like we're under pressure. The idea is what we call leverage. Now, if you and I have spent any time together at all, I'm probably gonna bring up the idea of leverage, especially if you're one of those folks that's got a lot more to do or more to do in your mind than you actually have time to do. The idea of leverage is a great big deal. Here's the deal. You've got all kinds of things that you need to do. And some of the stuff has deadlines to it, some of it doesn't. Some of the stuff you have promised that you're going to do. Other things that you just want to do. You got a big long to-do list. You may be the kind of person that wakes up every morning and within 10 seconds of waking up you realize, oh, I gotta get to work, I gotta get a bunch of stuff done. <laughs> You might be one of these kind of people who realizes you've got a lot to do and so you just decide you're going to pick up a bourbon and sit back and let the world take care of itself. <laughs> well, when you have a lot to do, how do you prioritize? One of the most basic questions, right? If you're a leader or a manager or a supervisor, if you're somebody who's trying to influence people to do great things and to be better at what they're doing, you're faced with this challenge all the time. How do you prioritize? And then how do you help other people prioritize their work? Because you know, we can only do one thing at a time. You may be somebody who loves the idea of multitasking, but you know, in reality, we can't multitask. And we can chew bubble gum and walk down the street, but we can't concentrate on learning to chew bubble gum and learning to walk at the same time. That just doesn't work. We can only focus on one thing at a time. Our habits will carry on in the background, but focus, conscious effort and decision making and paying attention to only one thing at a time. Like right now, you're paying attention to what I'm suggesting to you or your mind wandered and now it's back. That's just how it works. So knowing you can only focus on and work on one thing at a time, you and I have to be thinking about how do we pick? How do we prioritize? This idea of leverage will help you do that. Now, it's possible that you pick or prioritize what you're gonna work on based on a deadline. That's a fine way to do it. Though a deadline's approaching, work on something with the closest deadline. Perhaps you work on the things that seem urgent to you. So I'm gonna pick the most urgent thing and work on it. Now, there's danger in that, of course, because if it's urgent, then you're going to approach it like it's urgent. And work that requires judgment doesn't respond very well to pressure of urgency. <laughs> judgment happens at its own pace. You can't speed it up. So if you're working on things that require a, a, a sense of judgment, a really good judgment, thoughtful pause, think about it kind of thing, and then make good decisions and connections, urgency is not your friend. But maybe that's the way you prioritize all your work. What's the most urgent? Maybe you prioritize, you pick, what am I going to work on? based upon your emotions. <laughs> Maybe you're one of those folks that just says, I don't feel like working on that. Or I'll only work on the things that I like to work on and that'll get me going. Maybe you're the kind of person that eats your, eats your broccoli first when it comes to working on things at work. You eat the stuff that's the least pleasant on your plate first. I know some people like broccoli, but none of them are my friends. So if you are the kind of person that prioritizes your work based upon emotions, either I like it or I hate it, I'll get it out of the way. That is one pretty effective way, I guess, of prioritizing your work. There's a better way though, because maybe you're the kind of person, if you prioritize based on emotions, that you prioritize based on other people's emotions. Strong personalities, very strong personalities who kind of, in effect, push you with their emotions into working on something. That is one way of prioritizing. Maybe it's, um, Maybe you prioritize your work based upon the person or the people that are asking and how they fit into your life or into your organization. People who have a lot of sway over the quality of your life. Maybe that's how you prioritize. Or maybe it's something as simple as, you know, the, the first in uh, is the first out. So the, you look at a whole long list of things to do. The thing that showed up first on your list is what you're going to work on. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways of prioritizing. There's even the Eisenhower method, which you've seen before. Dwight Eisenhower, former president and military leader in World War II. Fascinating guy to study, by the way. 
ha came up with a way of thinking about how he prioritized and then challenged the people in his teams to prioritize. And he asked the question, is it urgent? Is it important? And uh, if, if, and then that creates kind of a, an interesting quadrant, something that's very urgent and very important compared to something that's not very important and not very urgent. It's a great model. It's a simple way. You can look it up called the Eisenhower Method. Um, that's a fine way of prioritizing, except that you and I are putting things in those categories or someone else based upon their strength of their personality or their position or their emotional manipulation, I guess, can help us put things in those categories. So it may not work very well. All right, let's get to what I have found to be a better way of choosing what you work on and when you work on it. We call it leverage. Leverage is this simple idea. When we think of everything we're doing as a system, it's all interconnected. And if you push on this, then that's going to move. It's called systems thinking. When you realize that you and I are people within systems that we have created or been created by others, and that when we move and do our work, that it impacts others. And this system can be a super tight system. So if I work uh, on anything right now, it's going to affect you right now. That's a tight system. Or it might be a loose system where if I work on something, there's a lot of slack in the system. So it might take a while for it to affect you. Imagine like a mobile hanging above a child's crib with a bunch of Disney characters hanging off of it. And if you move pieces of that mobile, you, you, you push on, on Goofy, for example, then maybe Minnie Mouse will move as well. Maybe the whole mobile will move. But understand that in a system, those are all connected. And if you pay attention, you can predict which way those parts will actually move. But most of us don't pay attention. Most of us don't even realize that we're in a system. So if we pull on Goofy, it's going to make Minnie Mouse pull down on Goofy. Doesn't mean Minnie Mouse is going to go up. Maybe Minnie will go counterclockwise because of how that system actually works. Kind of a silly illustration, but it's a great way to start. So at work and in our enterprises, you and I are in a system. And it's all connected, sometimes tightly, sometimes loosely. Sometimes there's no slack in the system, so we get immediate feedback. If we make a decision or do some work, there's an immediate result. Or sometimes in the system, it's a slow result with a lot of slack. So you do something, you don't even know if it's going to work for a while, and then it starts to work. So start here when you're going to prioritize by understanding that you are working within a system, and so am I system in part of our own creation and a system in part of other people's creation. But you've got to see the system. How is it connected? How is that person connected to that person? How is that problem and how we solve it connected to that problem over there? And it doesn't take long. Just kind of take a minute and get your eyes around it. Now, you're probably already, in a way, good at this because you know things like this. Wow, if I do this, that's going to piss those people off over there right away. Then you get it. See, there's a system there. There's a connection there. Or if I do this, it'll be something I will love, but nobody's going to work with me. Nobody's going to come along with me. I'll, have to, I'll be on my own because people are not going to spend their time and energy on it. They don't care. So that's a system. There's no connection there between you and the people who don't care. Nothing is going to move. It's a system, all right? There's a lot you can think about that. All that to set the stage for the idea of leverage. This is the concept of leverage in systems thinking. A small shift in one thing within that system produces a change in other things, maybe in a lot of things. A small change in how you pull on the goofy hanging above the child's crib, a small change produces a change in Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse and all the other Disney characters. And you can predict by watching that system what that small change will actually do. It's not hard to see. The idea of leverage then is to pick the right small thing that over time makes the best change. Because leverage is again a small shift in one thing will produce a big change in other things. Here's how you and I now use the idea of leverage. Knowing we're in a system, knowing we have a bunch of work to do, we look for points of leverage. This is the entire point of this communication with you, of this video with you. Look for points of leverage in everything you do. 
by asking this question. If I could only do one thing, and it's often a small thing, and do it well, and give it time to work, that if it worked, would have the best outcome over the longest period of time, more specifically, it would make other things easier to do, or unnecessary to do. If I could only pick one thing, that if I did it, would make other things easier to do, or unnecessary to do, what is that one thing? When you identify that, it is likely a point of leverage. Then when you do it, when you do it, it makes other things change in a way that you want them to change. Leverage is the answer to that question. A couple basic ideas about leverage. In a tight system, when you apply leverage, then you have immediate feedback. There's almost no delay. You do this, you're gonna get immediate feedback about whether or not it's actually a point of leverage. In a loose system, like if you work a part of an organization that's virtual and people work all over the country and they're working in different time zones, you may overlap an hour a day in your attention span. That's much more of a loose system. So if you apply the point of leverage in that kind of workplace, it might take a few days for you to know whether or not it even worked, whether or not people even noticed it. If you work in a fire department, for example, where, where there's a lot of shift work, and firefighters work a couple of days and then they're off for three days and then they work for a day and then they're off for three days or they take vacation. So it means that they're not around one another all the time like you would in a nine to five kind of work environment. That means that if you apply a point of leverage there, it might take a while for everyone to even notice it. You make a decision, we're gonna stop this or start that, tell everybody about it. It might take a month for people to even notice that. So there's a lag in that point of leverage. Tight systems, loose systems, same principles, but tight systems are ones wherein you'll get immediate feedback. How do you know it's a tight or loose system? Do something and find out if you get immediate feedback. <laughs> if it's a tight system, you'll get immediate feedback. If it's a loose system, it'll take a while, and then sometimes that feedback will be exaggerated because you took off running and there's slack Imagine between you and that person and you're up to full speed and they don't even know you're running. And then by the time you're at the end of that big long slack rope, it will jerk them. It's kind of like that in the workplace. All right, leverage then is the answer to this question. If I can only do one thing, if I did it well, that would make other things easier to do or unnecessary to do, what is that one thing? Then do it and wait for it to start to work. That is your point of leverage. Now let's get out of the theoretical and get right down into the practical as we come to the end of this conversation. How do you actually apply that? You go away for two days and come back and you got 150 emails. Apply it there. Scan the whole system. We'll call, we'll call that list of emails, just for illustration purposes, a system. Look at all the, just scan them all and then think if I could only answer one email that would make the other emails easier to answer or unnecessary to answer, What's that one email? Go through and pick. You're probably going to be right. And it'll probably take away 10 or 15 or 30 of those emails that you don't have to respond to. Or you can co copy and paste and only have to answer one but send it out to a bunch of people. However that works, how do I do that when I have 150 emails? Scan, look at the system, pick the one that if you answered it would make the biggest difference and it would make a difference by making other things easier to do or unnecessary to do. Here's another place to apply this. What if you have a conversation with a couple of your team members and there's seven or eight or 10 things you really feel urgent you need to talk about? Well, pick one. Pick one of those 10 things you feel like are on your list that you need to talk about and answer the question. Is, is this the one thing that if we talk about it will make the others easier to talk about? Conversations with people that are not planned out meetings but you've got a bunch of things you wanna cover and talk about, pick the point of leverage first. Don't leave it to the end of the conversation, start with the conversation. It's, it's a really a powerful way to go. Also, you got, you got scheduled standing meetings. Always go to the point of leverage first. There are a whole bunch of ways you can apply the point of leverage. You got a long to-do list and you could, back to the beginning of our conversation, prioritize that based upon your emotion or strong people's personalities or due dates. You could do that a better way is to look at your to-do list and ask if I were to do one thing really well on this to-do list, 
that would make the other things easier to do or unnecessary to do, what's that one thing? Do it first. Another place you can use it. If you have strategic planning and there's a whole bunch of things in your organization that you come out with, we need to do these 50 things in the next, next couple of years. Well, you're not going to do 50 things unless you're a brand new organization. You're just not going to do that. Of these 50 things, apply leverage. Pick one that if you did it and did it well would so change the landscape that the other of those 50 things would be easier to do or unnecessary to do. Now it's not math, it's, like, it's not like everything works as precisely as this, but if you use this principle, you will find yourself so much more free in your brain and in your calendar. It is a very powerful, powerful way of thinking and, and working. How do you do it? Start now, right now, start right now. Look at a list you've got as soon as you hit pause or hit the end of this video and you hit the like button if you liked it and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. As soon as you're done with that, <laughs> then look at all your stuff and say, all right, what's my leveraged? What's my point of leverage? You'll probably over a little bit of time get pretty good at answering what that question is. There are some places that I use leverage just as a discipline. I use it at the beginning of the month, looking out at the month. If there's one big thing I could accomplish, that is the point of leverage, what is it? I use it at the beginning of the week, Sunday nights. We've talked about that in one of our other videos, a time management. If it's not in your calendar, it's not in your heart, that video. So I do that at Sunday nights. I look ahead. What's my point of leverage for this week? I do it at the beginning of every day. What's my point of leverage? I do it at the beginning of meetings and I do it as, as I start anything. What's my point of leverage? And I've gotten fairly good over the years of practicing about spotting what a point of leverage is. Not always. Sometimes I miss it completely. But imagine you're surrounded by a bunch of dominoes and you just need to pick the one that if you push it over, all the rest of them will eventually go over as well. That's called a point of leverage. Practice this, you will be amazed at how much more effective you'll be at figuring out what you should give your best energy and effort to it. Here's another quick thought as we come to the end of this. How do you figure out if it was actually leverage? Because we're going to learn as we go along, well, that's leverage and that's not. We want to evaluate whether or not it was actually leverage. There's a, there's a warning here as you make this evaluation. Uh, a solution to a problem in a system can lead to the creation of another problem in the system. If the second problem that was created by the first solution is a smaller problem, it was probably a point of leverage. If it's a bigger problem, it's probably not a point of leverage. We also call that the law of unintended consequences. We can often see, if we just pause for a half a breath, what those unintended consequences can actually be. There's a funny Gary Larson far side cartoon that I remember from years ago. And you know his style of cartooning. It's really, it's simple and basic, but just he says so much in just one little cartoon panel. There are two buildings that are burning and you see the flames coming out of the top of these two buildings. And in between the two buildings on the street are five or six firefighters with the big old bouncy net, trampoline net that a person in the upper floor would jump into. There's a woman who has jumped out of the upper window. You don't see this. You just see the end of the cartoon. The, uh, she's jumped out of this burning building and she's gone down and bounced on this trampoline and bounced up and into the second burning window. <laughs> so she misjudged it completely or they did. They solved the problem. She's out of the fire, bounced into another fire. It's the classic out of the frying pan into the fire illustration that that was probably not a good point of leverage. And you and I can see if we choose to work on this in a system, it's going to have results and consequences. The idea of leverage is that it is intended consequences. You'll know it wasn't leverage if it had unintended consequences that made the problem worse in the other end of it. All right, there's some thoughts with you right now about the whole idea of how do you prioritize. Do not prioritize based on emotions or strong personalities, yours or anyone else's. <laughs> if you want to get a lot done and get the right stuff done, feel good about it at the end of the day and the week and the month, use the idea of leverage. So what one thing could you do that if you did it would make the biggest difference in solving all the other challenges that you've got? It might have something to do with bourbon. Who knows? Hey, thanks for joining us. Take care.